Today we're making a croissant pause. My name is Aries and welcome to Aries Atelier. So first we start with the pattern. I am tracing on cardboard paper here. The radius of my circle is 15 centimeter or you can just get any round stuff that's 30 centimeter wide and trace on your pattern paper. And after that we cut our shape out and this is the foundation of the size of the bag. So next, I cut out a smaller circular shape. It doesn't have to be round. This is going to serve as a handle. For the second piece in our pattern set, I'm just going to fold the first one into two, draw one centimeter allowance, then put it just in front of it, then trace out only half of my circle. This is what we're going to use to determine the outer part. So you cut that one out. And you cut out the handle too before you do any other thing. So I'm just going to randomly draw lines. I'm not drawing all the way to the end. And you're just going to cut those lines. You're not cutting the whole thing out. You're just cutting it like one centimeter or half. You want to just cut it enough so you can widen this shape. And we're doing that for the entire semicircle. So I'm just going to keep cutting all the way around, even to where the handle is. And you want to put glue. I'm using glue stick. You can use any type of paper glue. You can even use silver tape if you want. But you just want to be able to stick it on a fresh piece of paper. I actually made a little mistake here, but I corrected it off camera. That handle part that is actually curved, I was supposed to cut it. The whole thing it's supposed to sit straight on one line and you're going to see why very soon. I don't know why I forgot. I just made the mistake here, but I remembered and I corrected it. So you just trace your line out. It's supposed to look like this. The whole idea of this bag is just shredding a semicircle out into a straight line. Then when you're done, you now make gathers and fold it back. Just watch, just pay attention. You're going to get it very soon. So you're going to cut out your new shape. So as you can see, I straightened the edge out and this is what we're going to use to cut our patterns. I left those tiny holes so it'll be easier for me to fold in the future. So now it's time to sew. So the material I'm using here is, I'm using white for the outer part, white synthetic leather. And for the inner part, I'm using goat skin suede it's just like suede but it's really soft and it's much thinner than the actual leather suede so now we're go going to pin our straight parts along the edge of a folded it has to be folded evenly and you just trace it out so the size you cut is going to determine how wide it's going to be but if you notice, I punched some holes earlier on, on every part that I slit open. And this is so that I will remember exactly where I want to fold. So you are just going to do this one twice, but you have to be careful because any mistake is going to make the bag disproportionate. So I'm just going to cut one out before I go back and I cut a second one. I just kept it pinned on so that it doesn't shift or nothing moves around. So when you open it, it looks like a drumstick and I'm just going to go back and put my marks on those places that I put, I punched holes on my pattern. So it's very easy in the future instead of having to do this again. So I'm just going to cut a second one. So you have two pieces for the outer parts. So you can use thick fabric or anything, but just know that whatever material you use is going to determine how soft or how turgid your bag is going to be. For the handle, I actually switched and I used seven centimeter. I'm going to put the equivalent in seven inches. I'm going to put the equivalent in a centimeter. So it'll be easier for people who don't have, who don't use inches to be able to understand. And I'm just going to cut out the square. So 
so next i'm going to pin the outer pieces that we cut we're going to join them in the middle i'm just going to sew it first in the inner part so that one centimeter allowance you left originally when you were drawing out the semicircle that is what you're going to now sew in now and i'm just going to do um i think it's called a french top stitch where you open out your seams and you stitch both sides of your clothesline just to give it a very nice finish and to give it a very solid and neat look so you can see what it looks like you should try to make it as neat as possible because this is going to be in the middle of your bag so for the inner part of it we're using like i said before goats suede it's really soft and yeah like i just love the feel of this one so we're just going to take our original pattern the uncut one that's a full circle and i'm just going to trace this one and cut two pieces if you want to put pockets this is where you get to attach your pockets in but because of the way the purse is i don't really see the need for pockets so i'm just going to take the two pieces for the inner lining and i'm going to join them just sew them all around leaving a little space on one on one part of the bottom So just for the sake of neatness, I'm going to just go pin this all around so it doesn't shift while I sew. So you see how it looks after sewing it in all the way around and you leave an opening in the bottom and this is for later on when you're done sewing and you want to turn the whole bag inside out and you have like an easy outlet. So we're going to just put this aside while we now face the main piece itself so if you remember those tiny dots i was making we're going to join all those spots if you actually sew clothes this should make sense to you so you're basically making gathers to reform the original croissant or croissant shape so now we're shrinking everything back to the semicircle like the design of this thing is so clever you you will not understand it until you see somebody do it so I'm just going to clip every piece. It's good you take your time when you're on this level so you don't make any mistake because if it's too wide, it won't fit into the lining. If it's too narrow, the lining will be too big. So we're going to have this shape when we're doing one side. It's easier this way. So you can just take it to the sewing machine and sew it. So you want to take care whichever way you turn the pleats it doesn't really matter you can do everything to one side but in my own case when i get to the middle i usually invert the pattern so it looks intentional and not like just a mindless sewing so i just need to take time i'm going to show you guys the whole thing or as much as i can you just have to be as patient as possible I can imagine it's like this because I'm using synthetic, but if you're using Ankara, you can maybe iron in some thick um, interfacing and it should be much easier to sew. So now I've passed the middle, I'm doing the pleats in the other direction. So they sort of have like a flow and they all come down to the middle. I'm just going to sew this whole thing. And we're doing exactly the same thing for the two sides. So this is how one side should look like and you will just go back again to your marks that you had before and then you pin it and then you sew it then your shape should look like this if it doesn't look like this then you should rewind this video and see if you missed a step part of it and if you've passed this part congratulations you are 80 percent done So before I go on and sew the inner and the outer part together, I just want to put a quick fastening and here I am using the open bag lock. I just want to do it quickly and since it's already sewn together, you can literally just cut the two slits together. You don't have to do one side and the other. This way you're sure that what you're actually pinning is going to 
be even out. You're going to put one side of the magnet, then you put the washer and then you bend the back outwards so it doesn't come out or it doesn't come off and it doesn't rip the material. And the same thing for the other side. This is just so when you're carrying the purse, you know, okay, there's a little bit of security in it. So now you turn it right side out. Your purse should look like this. If you're using a visible magnet, fine. If you want to use a bag lock, I'm not really sure about it. But your work should look like this at this point. So you're going to zoom out a bit inner to the outer. So you turn your outer piece inside out, wrong side facing outside, and then you do the reverse for the lining. And then you put the lining inside the purse. So basically, they are both facing the wrong sides. The lining has the wrong side out. The outer has the wrong side facing out too. So you just join them like that. And this is where you pin. You should always start pinning from the middle. It's easier to make corrections when you pin this way. If you start from one end to the other, you may not notice you've made an error until you've gone too far. So I'm starting from the middle because one, the magnet, two, the stitching, the stitch line at the middle, everything has to be centralized. So you have to really be careful at this point. Then you just pin it all the way out. And because they are pleats, so even if you notice that the lining is longer or the outer is longer, you can easily correct it at this stage. It's not magic, it's handcraft. You don't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to sew the two lines straight. So this is one side and I'll show you the other side. And you should always watch your line. Make sure that the stitch you're doing now, it's a little bit farther in than the initial pleating that you did. So if you notice here, I made a little mistake. So I just shifted my hand a bit and I opened the pleats and I'm just going to sew everything together. So you should take your time. If you're using fabric, you can use pins, but since I'm using synthetic, that's why I'm using these clips. So after this stage, you should always watch your stitches, look at your line, because when you turn it inside out, it's always very painful. <laughs> you have to fold it the other way again and start correcting your stitch line. So you just squish in that little, it looks like an octopus at this point, I don't know why. So this is why you needed a hole in your lining for this so you just pull everything through you turn the handle the main part and everything so quickly before we finish i just want to make the handle so i just fold it into two and i fold one side and we just sew it and then we roll it in halfway like a socks the right side facing outside so now we want to hide the inner part and we have to be clever about it so now we have a cylinder that is half its original length the right side make sure it's the right side because this is the point of no return i'm just going to slide this into the machine and sew it all around so you want to be careful because it's a very tight squeeze Just sew it all the way around. So now I'm just going to shuffle this line that we just sewed. I'm just going to pull it back into the middle while also making sure that your, your short cylinder it's kind of flat. I'll show you guys what it looks like in the inside part. So you have your stitch in the middle and because what I use is very thick, then there's no instance of it coming out. So quickly off camera, I just joined the two tips. I wanted mine to be extra tight. So I, I sewed like two centimeter in. So you just trim it and you press it down. You can use gum at this point, but you can see mine was a very tight fit. But if what you're using is a little lighter, you can put a little super glue or a little contact adhesive. And there you have your complete 
personal post. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and I hope to hear from you guys soon.